Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben. I am the founder and content creator for IncredibleTutorials.com. I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 9 tutorials. So let's get started. The fill tools in Anime Studio Pro allow us to interact with objects and their fill properties on the Anime Studio document. This tutorial will highlight all of the fill tools on your left toolbar. So let's get started. The Select Shape tool allows us to select the properties of a filled object on your document. This can allow for the easy transfer of style properties or to change the style properties entirely. As an example, I am on the mountains layer of this piece of scenery. If I take the Select Shape tool and click on the mountains, you'll see that it changes the properties in my style panel. Now if I go to the ground layer and click on the ground, you'll see once again that it changes the style properties. Now if I go back to the mountains and click, and now come over here to my style panel and choose a fill color of orange and a stroke color of red and a width of five, or six, you can see that I have easily changed the style properties of the mountains simply by using the Select Shape tool. The Create Shape tool allows us to create shapes based on the selected points we have on our document. Anime Studio will take whatever properties you have from the style panel and apply it to the points. For instance, if I take the Create Shape tool and highlight these three points on my mountain, and then hit the spacebar, you'll see that a stroke has been applied between those three points. Now if I zoom out and highlight this entire mountain range, a checker pattern appears over what will be filled in. And now if I hit the spacebar, a fill color as well as a stroke color has been applied to the object. And this is because we selected an enclosed object. If you want to switch the default method in which you select things with the Create Shape tool, you can always check Lasso Mode, which will allow you to select shapes in a variety of different ways. Finally, the Create Shape tool is used to create shapes which have gaps. So as an example, I'll come up here to my Draw Shape tool, deselect Auto Fill and Auto Stroke, and draw a simple shape within the mountain. Now, I'll take the Create Shape tool, highlight the entire mountain, and you'll notice that the checkers are applied to everything except that oval. When I hit the spacebar, the mountains are filled in with the exception of the oval. The Paint Bucket tool allows us to paint in the fill and stroke properties for an enclosed object. The Paint Bucket tool can sometimes be tricky, if the object isn't completely enclosed, you won't be able to fill it in. Plus, if you have overlapping objects on the same layer, you may run into some issues with this as well. So if you encounter a problem, make sure you tweak your shape before applying the Paint Bucket tool. The Paint Bucket comes with three options, Fill, Stroke, and Both. Using the Fill option, let's come over here to our mountain and click and you should notice that only the fill color has been placed, which is dictated by our style panel. Now if I choose stroke and click on the mountain, you'll notice that only the stroke color has been placed as well as its width properties. Finally, if I choose both, you'll notice now that both fill and stroke properties have been placed for the mountain. The Delete Shape tool deletes the style properties you have placed on an object. As you know, in Anime Studio, we draw shapes out in the form of shape outlines. Those outlines will remain intact even after you use the Delete Shape tool. So if I take the Delete Shape tool and come over here to this enclosed object on the tree and click, the fill and stroke are deleted, but you can still see the outline for the shape and this will work for any of the enclosed objects I currently have on my tree. 
The eyedropper tool allows us to select the style properties of an object. Make a note of my current style properties. Now if I go on the tree layer and come over here to the tree and click on one of the leaves, you can see my style properties change to reflect that of that filled in object. You can now take these style properties, select the paint bucket tool, and transfer them over to a new object. The line width tool is used to adjust the width of a line by adjusting a point on your object. So if we take the tool and come over here to the tree and click on this top point, you can see that it is selected. Now if I hold down my mouse button and go up and down, you can see that I am adjusting the width of that line at that point. You can also adjust the width numerically. At the top of your software, you have a width area where you can enter in a number to change the width. Finally, if you want to change a bunch of points at once, you can use magnet mode. Here, whatever is in your magnet radius will be affected. So if we click and drag, we can see that these points down here are being affected because they are within the magnet radius. If you want to adjust the radius, you can come up here to your top bar and enter a number to make it bigger or smaller. The Hide Edge tool allows us to select a line and hide it from an object. This is similar to the Delete Shape tool in that your shape outline stays, but the appearance disappears. The exception here is with the Hide Edge tool, you can make a line disappear as well as reappear with a simple click of a button. The Stroke Exposure tool is similar to the Hide Edge tool in that you can hide a line or lines from an object. The difference here is that the Stroke Exposure tool gives you more control over which part of a line you want to hide. It also controls more than just one line that is extended between two points. If we take the Stroke Exposure tool and click on one of our points, and from here go from left to right while holding in our mouse button, you can see that as I go to the left, I'm getting rid of the stroke that is going around the leaves. If I go to the right, the stroke comes back. Again, this gives us greater control over what we want to hide for the object. You'll notice too, as I adjusted the stroke, at my top bar, the end percentage has changed. This means you can also adjust the percentages, the start and end, numerically if you want greater control. The Curve Profile tool allows us to adjust the curves of an object based on another object's shape. I'll be using the tree again as an example. And first, I need to select the top part of the tree with my Translate Points tool. So I'll just click to select that entire object. Now, I'll take the Curve Profile tool and come over here to these lines I have created for this particular demonstration. When I click, you'll notice that my leaves change the shape of those lines I made for this demonstration. You will notice, however, that the points of the object remain the same. Even though I have an object going up and down like this, the points, the original points rather, of the tree remain the same. Also, if I take my Translate Points tool and adjust these lines, you can see that the tree adjusts with them. This is great if you want to get a more detailed or particular shape. Finally, if I come back here to my curve profile, at the top there is a repeat counter area. This repeats how many times a shape occurs. So if I reduce this to let's say 6, you can see that the curve profile occurs much less frequently, giving us a less detailed shape. If however I bump this now up to 66, you can see that the shape occurs much more often now. 
And that wraps up this lesson on the fill tools for Anime Studio Pro. If you would like more information regarding Anime Studio, please check out the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. I have many more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so check them out, and I'll see you